but uh, it's time to bring you the news update. And we begin from the nation's capital, where the Central Bank of Nigeria on Tuesday assured Nigerians they will not lose their money even after February the 17th. CBN Governor Godwin Emifiele made this known at a fact-finding engagement with a special committee of the House of Representatives on the latest bank's cashless policy. National Assembly correspondent Joke Adisa has details. After last week's threat of arrest, CBN Governor Godwin Emifiele is before the lawmakers to respond to their inquiries. House leader and chairman of the committee, Adodogua, kickstarts the business of the day. He seeks to know reasons behind the CBN governor's inability to honor two earlier invitations. The House leader also speaks to the challenges Nigerians are passing through arising from the cashless policy. That the institution of the legislature here, in this case the House of Representatives, or by extension the National Assembly, and perhaps with the institution of the CB and the central bank itself as an institution, are in every aspect of it components of the Nigerian government itself. CBN governor apologizes for inability to come respond to the parliament's calls before now and restates his respect for the institution. In his presentation, Godwin Emefiele insists the policies in the overriding interest of the nation's economy. We are beginning to see some of the benefits. Like I said, inflation last month somewhat trended, at least it's not rising, it's not stagnating, is somewhat moderating. And we're thinking and expecting that they will continue to moderate. Exchange rate will still be relatively stable. And what we're even hoping with this exercise, that Naira can even get stronger. He blames deposit money banks for the scarcity of the new Naira nodes and seeks the support of the anti-graft agencies to nip any form of connivance in the board. Godwin Emefiele apologizes to Nigerians for the difficulties being experienced. You have your uh, money that you have not been able to send into the bank. We certainly will give you the opportunity to bring them back into the CBN, to redeem it, either you pay it in your bank account or you want to do exchange, we give you. You will not lose your money. I thank you and your team for, of course, admitting the position of the law. And that is all we expected. And at this point in time, therefore, the ball now falls on our court. We must go around on the street, especially to our constituencies at this very critical period, to let people understand that the law remains sacrosanct. As part of measures the bank is taking to make the transition seamless, the CBN governor says 1.5 million super agents, otherwise known as agent bankers, have been effectively deployed to the grassroots. All staff of the Central Bank of Nigeria have also been effectively deployed to their localities to attend to the needs of the people. The bank's expectation is that with the support of the National Assembly, security agencies and anti-graft bodies, the nation's economy will be the better for it. Joke Adza, TVC News, Abuja. All right, the ruling APC has taken the renewed hope message of its presidential candidates to Anambra and Cross River states. There, Ashwa Jubalatinubu assured the overwhelming crowd of his determination to fulfill all the promises made to Nigerians if elected. Olawakon reports. This is the arrival of the APC presidential candidates to Anambra states. Imo State Governor and other chieftains of the party in the state were on hand to receive Ashiwaju Bola Tenubu at the airport. At the venue of the rally in Oka, the Anambra State capital, the APC presidential flag bearer and his team were surprised to see the huge turnout of supporters in the state of one of the contenders. The APC chieftains spoke to the crowd about the capacity of Ashiwaju Tenubu to develop Anambra and the country at large. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu promised the crowd that it will make Anambra a world economic city and create jobs for the youth. We will make those realize and make 
Penumbra, World Economic TV and Economic Center of Nigeria. From there, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu's plane flew to Calabar, the capital of Cross River State, where the reception was carnival like. Accompanied by his running mate and members of the Presidential Campaign Council, as well as the National Working Committee of the APC, Cross River State Governor ushered them to the stadium where thousands of supporters have been waiting for hours just to see and hear from the Jagaban of Bogu. Governor Ben Ayade and others appealed to residents of Cross River to give their vote to Ashiwaju Bola Tidubu and other APC candidates. We want to come and celebrate you. God bless you, Ashiwaju. Don't forget our Bakasi Tipsipo. Cross Riverers want to see Bakasi Tipsipo and they want to see the super highway. Come 25th of February, all of you will go out and vote for Ashiwaju Bola Tidubu and Senator Kashif Shetima. Rivers is for Ashiwaju and Ashiwaju is for Ross River. The same with Kashi. Thank you. The former governor of Lagos thanked the crowd for their support and patience. He promised to support the state to build the deep sea port and facilitate other infrastructure projects when he becomes the president of Nigeria. We will create jobs here. Being the first time the campaign train of the APC presidential candidate will be holding rallies in two states, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu stressed his commitment to fulfilling his renewed hope promises for Nigerians if elected the next president of the country. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Calabar. The presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Rabi Kwankwosu, says he has all it takes to turn around the fortunes of a country. Kwankwosu stated this in Kayama during the campaign tour of the senatorial candidate of the party in Kwara North senatorial uh, seat. Uh, correspondent Ibrahim Alege has more in this story. The people of Kayama in Kwara State trooped out to welcome the presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Senator Rabi Okonkoso, to the palace of their emir. This is in spite of the delay of the arrival of the presidential candidate due to bad roads. Senator Konkoso laments various challenges affecting the country and describes his party as the solution to return the lost glory of the country. In terms of insecurity, in terms of uh, economic crisis that we have, and uh, even in dilapidated infrastructure and so on, even the issue of unity, um, I think is as low as ebb now, and so on and so forth. So we are running away from the status quo. By the grace of God, we are going to have new Nigeria on the 25th of uh, February this year. The NMPP senatorial candidate for Kwara North, Kuluba Bajia, describes the next election as one that will be candidate focused instead of political parties. You see, we are not talking of parties this time around. We are talking people behind these parties. I don't see myself contesting with any other party political or any other candidate because I know my people knows me very well and I'm popular within my people. So if I'm popular within my people, we shouldn't talk of party. They have other parties that are of decades, but I'm coming as a new party. We're talking of people. I know I have seen the mistake of other contestants. I have seen mistakes of the serving senator. And if I'm voted into power to go there because I've seen their mistakes, definitely I will make corrections. On his part, the NNPP chairman in Kwara State, Abdul Razak Abdul Salam, believes old political parties have failed the people while his party will provide an alternative to the electorate. Uh, if you look at the strength and the, the way NMPP is moving within the rank and file of Quara, you'll find that that is uh, is a content within NMPP and other parties. Yeah, and most especially when you have uh, people with integrity around you that are vibing for positions, then you see integrity here is coming to play. 
It is gone at those days where it is business as usual. The presidential and national assembly elections hold on the 25th of February, and the party equally fancies its chances to do well. Ibrahim Alige, TVC News, Kayama, Kwara State. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention has confirmed the death of 37 persons from Lassa fever in the first three weeks of 2023. In its Lassa fever situation report published on Tuesday, the center said the number of deaths re represents 15.1 percent of the 244 confirmed cases in 16 states across 50 local government areas. The NCDC said for week three, 18 deaths were recorded out of 137 confirmed cases in 37 local government areas of 14 states. 79 of all confirmed Lassa fever cases were reported from Ondo, Edo, and Bochi states, while 21 were reported from 13 states with confirmed Lassa fever cases. The predominant age group affected is 21 to 30 years. The number of suspected cases increased compared to that reported for the same period in 2022. Two new healthcare workers were said to be affected in the third week of reporting. 